it's Luke back again this time for our final fantasy football rankings here for the 2021 season. We only have a week and a half until football kicks off, so starting to get those early nervous feels, some of that excitement. Um, really looking forward to the season to start. A lot of people also have their fantasy drafts this week. People are drafting best ball leagues, all that sort of stuff. So what better time to get out here and give you guys our top 100 players for the year. Whether you're playing a best ball draft, season long league, these are the guys I think you should be drafting in your first 10 rounds of fantasy draft. So without further delay, we have a lot of players to get through. Let's hop into the top six for this year. So kicking it off with our top six this week, we have our best players on the board, obviously. Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara. I think they have the best upside this year due to their catching and PPR um, bonuses. I mean, obviously, Kamara caught nearly 90 balls last year, put up just as many receiving yards as rushing yards, caught plenty of touchdowns as well. And if we take a look at McCaffrey's 2019 season, he put up even more impressive numbers out of the backfield. Um, so Dalvin Cook, you know, he's the odd man out, makes it at number three for that reason, but don't really hate him this year at all. We go over the Derrick Henry at number four. He's an absolute workhorse, going to be very consistent week in and week out, plays very well against good defenses as well, so don't really hate that. But where you may be surprised is a little bit at my five and six picks, two receivers. I am much higher on Devontae Adams and Tyree Kill than most this year. Both of them have very consistent roles, put up games with 30, even 40 fantasy points. And I think buying in early of them, especially in best ball formats, is extremely important. Um, when these two receivers go off the field, you tend to see an entire run of them. Um, people seem comfortable waiting on receiver until this run happens, but I'm usually the one that sparks that run just because I don't want to be left out. Um, unless I have an early first round pick, I'm obviously investing in either Maca um, Kamara or McCaffrey if I can. Um, but if I'm stuck in the middle of their first round, I typically take a jump on one of these receivers. If Adams is there, I'll take him. If he's not, I'll take Tyreek Hill. Um, if both of them end up getting taken, we'll get onto our next tier here. But that's when I'm really looking to get back into the running back position. Um, out of the top six picks, by far my favorite slot to draft in is number five. Um, Devontae Adams, I think, is going to show very similar numbers to what he had last year. Was the number one, number one fantasy wide receiver last year. Um, quite nearly the number one fantasy player in general. So really like Devontae Adams. And if I had to pick one out of here, he's my favorite pick. And now for the end of the first round, perhaps the beginning of the second round for some smaller leagues. Again, I like getting back into the running backs here if I have to, if these two wide receivers are taken. If you're looking for another receiving threat, Travis Kelsey could fall to you in perhaps the eight or nine slot. Um, I also like taking him um, in that instance as well. But somebody I really wanted to take a deep dive on was Saquon Barkley. Um, I think he's being drastically, drastically overlooked this year in terms of fantasy contests. Um, back in 2019, when he was at full pressure, you know, his second year in the league out of Penn State um, was an absolute stud you know had that receiving upside was catching five to six balls per game was also putting up 100 150 yard rushing performances seemingly every week so obviously has that huge concern I'd say with the injury is coming back from a catastrophic leg injury but somebody who's extremely strong we've seen the type of workouts that he's put in um, especially back at Penn State when the vi um, videos were going viral and whatnot I mean, if anyone can come back from the injury, it is Saquon Barkley. So especially in best ball formats where you're trying to take a little bit more of a gamble, um, especially for GPP contests on DraftKings, I think Saquon Barkley is a great pick to do that. At number 10, um, we'll talk about Stefan Diggs here for a little bit. Somebody I really like, especially because I'm so high on Josh Allen. We'll get to Josh Allen here in a little bit. He's my number one fantasy quarterback this year. So when I'm trying to get Josh Allen, if I'm trying to create a Buffalo Bills stack, I really prioritize getting Stephon Diggs. So um, you'll see in a lot of my live drafts or any of the lineups I enter for DraftKings, Stephon Diggs makes quite a few of my lineups, especially when I have a late first round pick. Um, getting into these last two running backs here, Nick Chubb and Austin Eckler. Um, Chubb obviously does it with the running production, is going to get 20, 25 carries per game. So you really like the floor with somebody like Nick Chubb, but I really like the upside of Eckler, and I usually take Austin Eckler over Nick Chubb if I have to choose between the two. Um, again, I usually play PPR formats, so you're getting a huge boost with Austin Eckler. He's going to catch plenty, plenty of passes out of the backfield. He's also somebody who has Justin Herbert at quarterback, and that offense is going to score a whole of a hell of a lot more points than they are up in Cleveland. Cleveland likes to run out the clock they like to rely on their defense play a little bit more scrappy football out there in LA you know it's Justin Herbert just throwing the ball all over the yard they're putting up 40 50 points per game um, and I really like targeting running backs in great offenses like that and now getting into our second round picks here this is the part of the draft where you can really separate yourself from the field obviously in the first round you're trying to take the best player available pretty much everyone up there is a surefire stud gonna put up a solid points 
pretty much every week if they don't get injured. But down here in these um, next few rounds, you're really starting to get some of the breakout candidates or people potentially finishing number one at the position. You know, obviously last year we had quite a few guys do so. Uh, Devontae Adams was not the number one wide receiver picked last year. Uh, also at running back, we had a few standouts as well in this range. But DeAndre Hopkins and DK Metcalf, they grade out very similarly for me this year. Both of them number one wide receivers, very large targets that catch a lot of touchdowns. Obviously both have elite quarterbacks as well. Obviously you have Kyler Murray, you have Russell Wilson up there in Seattle. Um, so I love both of them. I think they both are in a prime position to break out this year. Uh, we take a look at DeAndre Hopkins' point per game production. Obviously, sat out a few games last year. Was one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, um, finishing number three. DK Metcalf didn't really have the injury bug, but was very consistent, um, scoring over 100 yards in, in most of his games last year. Also had over 12 touchdowns. So love to see that from DK Metcalf. I think DeAndre Hopkins, if he can stay healthy, is a great pick as well. Um, getting into some of these lower guys in this range here, um, Aaron Jones, I don't hate at all. Um, also has a lot of PPR upside. Um, Calvin Ridley, if he had a better quarterback, a more stable offense, I'd be a lot higher on him. Um, so that's why you see him a little bit lower in my rankings than you would in others. The biggest surprise here by far is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, last year's disappointment. Um, somebody who was being drafted in the first round of fantasy drafts came out, wasn't really what people were expecting. So as a result this year, you see a lot of people avoiding him in fantasy drafts. He's coming in the late third round. And for me, he's somebody I'm willing to take in the second. I think obviously that Kansas City offense is going to be one of the most potent in the entire NFL. So as a result, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is going to get a ton of red zone looks. He's also somebody who catches a good amount of passes out of the backfield. And now that Le'Veon Bell is completely out of town, completely out of the picture, he should have even more touches this go around. So he's somebody who's being slept on, in my opinion. You don't have to take him here in the second round, obviously, because his ADP isn't until the late third. You could probably wait until the early third or late second to take him, but I think he's a great pick for a breakout candidate here in 2021, especially after the disappointing rookie season. And at number 18, we have somebody I'm a little bit lower on than most. He had a pretty good rookie season, obviously really started to stand down in the second half when he started to get a majority of the touches in Indianapolis. But my problem with Jonathan Taylor, and Jonathan Taylor won me my fantasy league last year, so I probably shouldn't be throwing too much shade on his grave here, but he doesn't catch many passes out of the backfield. You know, he doesn't have great hands. When they get into those third down situations, or even in the red zone, they started to defer to Daeem Hines. You know, when Jonathan Taylor was in the game. Team started to stack the box. They knew they were going to run the ball. Um, they knew that he wasn't going to, you know, go out for a pass. When Naheem Hill Fields was on the, sorry, Naeem, um Hines was on the field, it was the complete opposite problem, right? They knew they weren't going to run the ball. So as a result, um, ended up taking a lot, putting in a dime package, putting an extra DB, something like that. Um, so I don't like, love to see that with Jonathan Taylor. Um, he's a little bit too one-dimensional for me. Um, and that's why he comes in at number 18. Obviously, if he falls to me in the late second round or something like that, uh, I wouldn't have a problem taking him in that instance. Now at number 19, we have one of my favorite players. Also was a huge factor in my fantasy success last year. That was Darren Waller, somebody who has all the athletic upside in the world. Um, people call him a freak of nature, that kind of thing. So as a result, I took him as a flyer pick last year at tight end. I mean, obviously, um, wasn't a late round pick by any means, but ended up outseeding those, uh, sorry, exceeding those expectations by miles and miles and miles. And I expect similar production this time around and an even better offense in Las Vegas. So um, you have Derek Carr out there, obviously not the best quarterback, um, somebody who deals with a lot of accuracy issues. But the good thing for Waller is that the weapons around him are going to have more time to mature. They brought in a few extra weapons as well. Brian Edwards looks very good. Henry Ruggs is showing a lot of speed. It's starting to look a little bit more like the deep threat that we thought he would be. Um, their O-line got bolstered, has even more experience as well. So I think Darren Waller, as that offense progresses, as he starts to get even more red zone targets, as they become a better offense, he becomes a better player for me. He starts to project better um, as he scores more touchdowns. I mean, it's pretty intuitive. He's going to have a better season. So Darren Waller being a little bit slept on, somebody I'm definitely considering taking at the end of the second rounds or even in the beginning of a third round if he drops to me. Um, somebody I want to mention this round, Joe Mixon. So Joe Mixon, a lot of people are trying to avoid him in fantasy. You know, he had that injury plagued season last year somebody i drafted in the second round of my fantasy league gets still won um you know yeah a lot has to go right for you to still win if your second round pick and en ends up being out for the year um, but that really stung a lot of people maybe i'm just not as stung because it didn't really hurt me but i'm willing to go back to joe mixon um, when he played last year he was excellent um, had a four touchdown game at one point 
Um, it was like the one week he was on my bench, right? He was coming back from injury, came out, scored like 38 fantasy points. Um, but even with an injury, even when he was a little bit slower because of that, still had plenty of upside. So I don't hate going there at all. Um, Jefferson and Keenan Allen, I love the roles in high volume offenses. Obviously up there in Minnesota, you have Kirk Cousins, loves to throw the ball. Out there in LA, you have Justin Herbert, obviously loves to throw the ball as well. So that's why I like those two receivers. They're in high volume offenses. George Kittle, you know, meh. I'm at 23. I'm a little bit higher on him than most, but he's a tight end. I'm usually looking to either get Travis Kelsey or Darren Waller. So if I have to take George Kittle, I'm willing to go there as well. But somebody I'm huge on this year, somebody I'm way higher on than most is David Montgomery. So up there in Chicago, people think that Justin Fields is going to come in, obviously invigorate the offense. They're going to start throwing the ball a whole lot more. And for some reason, people think that means Montgomery is going to do worse this year. A majority of David Montgomery's production as a running back is by catching the ball out of the backfield. He's by far one of the best PPR running backs in the entire NFL. So the fact that he has a better guy throwing him the ball, they have a more let's say, well-rounded offense, a lot more experience with Matt Nagy as well. I expect David Montgomery to only improve on his 2020 season, which was already excellent. For our next range, kicking it off, we have C.D. Lamb. I absolutely love C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper. You see there at 27 as well. Um, Dak Prescott coming back into the offense is going to do wonders for everyone in Dallas. Before he ended up getting injured, he was averaging over 500 yards passing per game. C.D. Lamb got up to a torrent start as a rookie. Amari Cooper was putting up massive numbers, was a top five fantasy wide receiver with Dak Prescott. So while we have Dak Prescott back, he's one of my favorite quarterbacks this year. Cracks my top five. So these wide receivers, you know, for that same reason, are also very high on my board. A.J. Brown, you know, very he's pretty much right at the average right there, there at 26. Don't really have that much to say. I think Julio Jones being added to the mix only helps him. So definitely agree that he's going to have a breakout year. Just, you know, don't really see that even more so than the public. I'm right there with everyone. Um, at 28, we get Josh Allen. Really want to talk about Josh Allen. Somebody I think is going to have a massive season here in 2021. Last year was the number one fantasy quarterback. Did so with a lot of rushing yards. Did so with a lot of passing touchdowns as well. Very well-rounded. Um, really was consistent week in and week out as well. Didn't really have any like sub-10 point performances. Didn't go out and bolster his numbers with 40 point performances or anything like that. So Josh Allen, somebody I love pairing with Stephon Diggs. Maybe getting somebody like Cole Beasley down low um, or even Dawson Knox, just somebody who's very stackable, somebody who has the rushing upside I'm looking for as well. And if I'm going to be drafting a quarterback early, he's definitely the name that I'm looking for. At number 29, we have Allen Robinson, somebody I'm pretty much average on in terms of my sentiment for towards the general public. Let's just say I'm not the biggest believer in Justin Fields. A lot of people think he's like the next coming, you know, a next great quarterback since Patrick Mahomes, that kind of thing. I don't see it. Uh, I, I just think that he's been playing backups in the preseason. Obviously, he's going to look pretty sharp. But when we put him out there against first-team offenses that have been game planning for him, um, I think we're going to see something very different. So Allen Robinson, he played well with a shitty quarterback last year. So again, that's why he's coming in right at 29. You know, right around where the public has him as well. Um, he was good with a shitty quarterback. So even if Justin Fields sucks, I expect him to be relatively similar. And number 30, we have Antonio Gibson. I am way lower on Gibson than most. I think the whole Washington offense is going to look really dreadful this year. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. We have no idea how long that's actually going to last. Um, he's very much so a hot or cold player. We've seen him go out through three or four interceptions for two straight games, get benched for an entire season. We've also seen him come in and play an absolute superhero, right? Superman come in for the guy who's injured, throw five touchdowns and win him a, win him a game. So it really depends on what version of Ryan Fitzpatrick, sorry, Ryan Fitzpatrick we see this this year um last year it wasn't great um down in miami that's why he ended up getting benched um, washington offense sucked last year as well so unless he breathes fire into it unless he comes out throwing five touchdowns a game like he does every once in a while um antonio gibson's not going to be a very good pick this year either finally get patty mahomes at 31 don't hate patty mahomes at all but he's being drafted way too early for me a lot of people are taking him towards the end of the second round beginning of the third round and for me if i'm going to take someone early i'd much rather be josh allen who is much higher running upside and, so, and higher passing upside in my opinion as well at 22 we have miles sanders i'm much higher on sanders this year than most i think the philly offense is going to be really very efficient i think jalen hurts is going to surprise a lot of people so as a result miles sanders 
Very good out of the backfield. Going to catch a fair amount of passes. Also should get plenty of red zone looks as well. Um, Tom Brady is one of my favorite players this year. Somebody I think is going to throw nearly 5,500, perhaps even 6,000 yards. So it's no surprise to see Mike Evans at 33. Somebody who's a nuclear threat for any slate. Somebody can go out, catch three touchdowns, 200 and something yards. Um, has the 70, 80 yard play pretty much every time he goes out there. Um, so love Mike Evans, really high upside play, especially since I like Tom Brady so much. Um, Robert Woods, I also like Matt, Matthew Stafford. So Matt Stafford, Tom Brady, probably my biggest breakout candidates at quarterback this year. Guys, you don't even have to take early in drafts, you know, guys that are going in the eighth, even ninth round. Um, so Robert Woods, somebody who's a great target for Matthew Stafford. Again, Matthew Stafford with bad weapons up in Detroit. Um, o, coordinator, o coordinators that really didn't know what they were doing nearly um, passed for 6,000 yards, right? We take him down to Sean McVay, an absolute offensive mastermind. He has three Pro Bowl level, level receivers, a great O-line. Um, what's not to love about that offense? And Robert Woods is going to be a key cog in that. So we got James Robinson next, somebody who wasn't on my radar just a week ago. But now that Travis Etienne's hurt, Robinson should look very much so like he did last year. You know, a lot of people were worried about his touches. He was still going to share the ball with Etienne. But now that he's out for the year, Robinson's going to be the workhouse back. Um, he played very well last year, so don't hate him at all. Um, just don't like that he's going as early as he is. If he can start going in the beginning of the third round rather than the second round, um, then I'll, I'll just start getting him a lot more in my fantasy drafts. Um, and finally, at 36, we have Cooper Cup, the other Pro Bowl receiver out there in L.A., um, a little bit more high upside in PPR formats as well. You know, runs a lot more of the shorter routes, tends to catch seven, eight balls when he's really getting it going. So really like Cooper Cup in the LA Rams offense as well. At 37, we have another key cog of that Tampa Bay offense. Chris Godman going to be playing on the outside a majority of the time this year. Um, Antonio Brown's going to be the slot receiver down in Tampa Bay. So as a result, Chris Godman is going to get plenty of yardage, going to get plenty of targets on deep routes as well. Um, so that's why he's a little bit lower this year than I sh we really would have had him. Um, if he was playing in the inside, his normal slot role, he'd get a lot more catches. I think he's a little bit more comfortable in that role as well. Um, it's still a very solid target there at 37. At 38, we have Tyler Lockett, the number two for the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, last year played much better than the number 37 ranked fantasy player. Again, I think DK Metcalf's going to take even more of the target share this year. He's just going to take a huge step forward. So as a result, we may see a little bit of a downtick in the targets for Tyler Lockett, but still, still really like him. Still a very consistent target for any type of fantasy contest. At 39, we do have Josh Jacobs. Again, I think the whole Las Vegas offense is going to look a lot better than people expect. We have people getting more experience at wide receiver. Brian Edwards, we have Henry Ruggs, who's looking a lot better. Um, Derek Carr, all those kind of things. So as a combination, that offense is holistically going to look a lot better. And Josh Jacobs, who's a running, a rushing touchdown, you know, running back dependent player, is absolutely going to benefit. Terry McLaurin, I do not like. Somebody who, again, in that Washington offense is going to suffer if they don't have a great year. So Terry McLaurin, not taking him in pretty much any fantasy draft this year. Um, Najee Harris, I'm, not, I'm a Steeler fan, guys. So again, take that with a grain of salt. But I, I do not like him this year. He's somebody who I think Benny Snell may take a lot of carries from. Um, he's going in the second round of fantasy drafts, and that is entirely too early. The Pittsburgh Steelers don't like to play rookies right away. I mean, we saw it with Le'Veon Bell, somebody who sure got the starts, but wasn't getting 20, 30 touches um, until his second year. So Najee Harris, I'm a little bit more concerned about him than most would be. Um, a lot of people are looking from the outside. when Because when, here's the narrative. So... When Steeler running backs get hurt, the backup always gets like the same amount of touches. Like they just take, let's say last year, I mean, obviously we had James Conner, right? James Conner got hurt. Benny Snell went in and got like 25 carries. Still got on balls thrown to him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's when we have an established game plan. The Steelers don't like to deviate from their game plan. They get a set of personnel. They create a game plan at the beginning of the season and they execute on that. So last year they tried running the ball. It obviously didn't work. They weren't very efficient with it, but they ran the ball a ton. That was still part of their game plan. This year, they're looking to be a lot more efficient with their running. They've talked about trying to run the ball better, not necessarily more. So with Najee Harris, obviously, he's going to be a little bit more explosive. I expect him to have a higher yard per carry. But at the same time, he's on every down back, in my opinion. He's a little bit small. He doesn't have enough weight, in my opinion, to break a ton of tackles. So Benny Snell's still going to see plenty of touches. Um, Najee Harris, by the way, um, still love him as a player. I obviously hope that he proves me wrong here. Um, but yeah, I see Benny Snell being a little bit too much of a vulture for him. So as a result, I'm not drafting him in my fantasy lineups this year. I um, mean, at 42, we have Chris Carson of the Seattle Seahawks offense. 
I don't really love them in that offense either. I just think they're playing a little bit of poker out here, you know, telling everyone they want to run the ball a ton this year. Um, Pete Carroll, that's all he talks about in his damn press conferences. But last year, they threw the ball more than any team in the NFL. So I don't necessarily buy that. I think a lot of that is coach speak. So that's why I'm a little bit lower on Chris Carson than the general public. And now at 43, we got Kyler Murray, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson. I like all three of these picks, especially Kyler Murray. Somebody I had in my fantasy last year ended up winning me my fantasy league. He was obviously the number one fantasy quarterback for quite some time. Ended up having to switch off of him for, him for the fantasy playoffs, but found quite a good substitute. Um, DJ Moore, don't love as much as I loved last year. Was somebody I also had on my team. Ended up having a breakout year with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. Um, I just don't think Sam Darnold's really going to get the job done. So I expect a little bit of regression from DJ Moore, even though he's a very talented wide receiver. Deontay Johnson, I'm right about the average on Deontay Johnson. You know, as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, obviously he gets a ton of volume. So that's what you like to see with Deontay. The issue with the drops, he's somebody who goes into streaks where he can't catch a ball. And when that happens, he tends to get benched. We saw it twice last year, Mike Tomlin putting him on the bench. So you hate when that happens, right? He has all these huge weeks, catches a ton of balls, but when he gets benched and he really hurts you, um, that's what you remember. At 46, we have Dak Prescott. Again, I mentioned one of my favorite quarterbacks for this year, typically going in the sixth, seventh round, but I take him in the fourth or fifth round just to make sure I can get him. Um, somebody, again, who was averaging 503 yards per game before he got injured last year. So even if he's a shell of himself this time around, still going to be a very solid fantasy quarterback. At 47, we have DeAndre Swift. Again, I'm right around the average on him. Don't want to go into it too much. That offense is just going to be dreadful. You know, he's a Running back one, going to get plenty of touches, uh, but not very efficient touches. And then we have Lamar Jackson, somebody I'm right about average on as well. Um, has the rushing upside that you're looking for, but his passing upside is a little bit capped. You know, has accuracy issues. Um, teams have had a lot more success stopping him of late, so I'm a little bit more cautious on him. But if I can't get Dak, Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, one of my top end guys, um, I'll take Lamar Jackson if he falls a little bit in our draft. Now as we start to near the fifth and sixth round of fantasy drafts, I'm starting to really look for depth pieces rather than starters. Um, obviously, you're still going to be finding guys to fit in um, as your second, third wide receiver, your second running back, that kind of thing. But I'm starting to take the best player available just in hopes and in, in knowing that there's going to be plenty of injuries come this season. So you can never have too many running backs, never going to have too many wide receivers. Um, so I'm really trying to stack up on those skill positions. So at 49, we have my, um, Mark Andrews, somebody who was one of the best tight ends last year when he was able to play. Obviously had the injury bug for a little bit. Um, don't love to see that, but very productive, catches a ton of touchdowns. And if Lamar Jackson has a great year, don't hate stacking those two at all. And say we have Adam Thielen and Julio Jones right here, number two options on their teams. Um, again, very high volume offenses. We're going to see Tennessee throw the ball an absolute shit ton this year. Up there in Minnesota, they've been throwing the ball for the last four or five years. So don't hate either of those two options. They're number two wide receivers that could really put up some wide receiver one production on fantasy. At 52, we have Kyle Pitts. I don't know why the hell people are taking him in the third or fourth round. I don't care how talented this kid is. He's a rookie tight end. Um, enough said. I'm not, I'm not going in any more than that. People are fucking crazy. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. at 53. Um, I'm a little bit higher on him than most, obviously coming off a very scary injury, but it's Odell Beckham Jr., one of the most athletic guys in the entire NFL. From all reports that we've heard out of Cleveland, his recovery is going very well. Uh, they're not going to throw the ball a whole ton in Cleveland. That's why he doesn't crack my top 30 or 40. Um, I think he could be a top 10 wide receiver this year, even without a ton of production or without a ton of throws going his way. Um, that's just how talented he is. And at 54, we have Mike Davis of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, don't draft Kyle Pitts of the Atlanta Falcons. I'll just say that. But if you do want to take someone from them, take Mike Davis. Um, that whole offense isn't going to be very good this year. Um, they've downgraded pretty much across the board, whether it's O-line, skill position players, running back. Um, they didn't improve anywhere. But Mike Davis, somebody who catches a lot of balls out of the backfield, obviously filled in for Christian McCaffrey last year, did a very good job. Won some people their fantasy leagues down there in week 16, 17. So Mike Davis, again, he's not a very talented player, but he's going to get a lot of volume. So I don't hate going to him for that reason. Now we have Aaron Rodgers, who sits at a very peculiar spot for me because, again, if I miss out on some of my top-end options, Aaron Rodgers is a great fill-in. So that's why he comes in at 55. 
Um, somebody I'm willing to draft if I don't already have my quarterback. Antonio Brown may be a huge surprise for some of you guys, coming at 56 for me. Again, him and Tom Brady have a special connection. Um, they lived together for a good amount last year. He finally moved out, has his own place now. So they're not quite that close anymore. But Antonio Brown, very good slot receiver, very reliable. I mean, held just three years ago, guys. He was the best wide receiver in the NFL. So the fact that he hasn't gotten into that much trouble, I mean, gone into that one fist fight, but nothing came of it. Um, I absolutely love his upside. So I'm drafting him very early in a lot of my fantasy leagues in hopes that he comes out and even as a shell of himself from three years ago. Um, Damian Harris, I'm very high on the New England product. Somebody who with Mac Jones is going has been very good so far. They've gotten a lot of time together on the field. Damian Harris has been very impressive at a camp as well. So as somebody who's looking for a little bit of depth at this part of the draft, Damian Harris is a very good running back number three or four for your fantasy team. Um, T. Higgins, Not as big on him as some other people are. I just think the Cincinnati offense may take a few games to get into gear. Um, I think once Joe Burrow Burrow does, though, he's going to have a very good year. So couldn't fault you for taking Higgins. Um, Brandon Ayuk, um, if Trey Lance has a great year, Ayuk's going to be a big reason why. Down the field threat, tons of speed. Is capable of putting up a 70 or 80 yard catch on pretty much every snap. So if he ends up having a massive rookie season, Ayuk would be the beneficiary. So... As a stab play in this range, if pretty much everyone else is taken, um, I don't have any problem taking Ayuk if I have to. Um, Daryl Henderson Jr., again, I'm about to sentiment, about average in terms of my sentiment on Daryl Henderson Jr. You know, not one of the best running backs in the NFL. Uh, obviously, he's going to get some playing time. I'm a lot higher on somebody like Sony Michelle. So Sony Michelle is going a lot later in drafts, and I think Sony Michelle actually may take over for the starting job. So if you need to take a running back here, um, you maybe only have one on your roster at this point. Um, then you can draft Henderson Jr. We now clip the halfway mark in our rankings here. We start to get more of filler guys, either guys with a lot of potential that don't have a carved out role or people with a carved out role that aren't really as flashy that I'm frankly avoiding. So I'm looking for a lot more high upside people now that we're out of these first six rounds. Um, the guys like Kareem Hunt that are going to be consistent, you know, get you a few catches every week, put up maybe 15 fantasy points in general. They don't really excite me. You know, they're not going to win you a fantasy league. Um, they might be filler spots here and there, but the best part about fantasy football is that we have the waiver wire, right? If you're not playing a best ball format, you're always able to find guys on the waiver wire that you can use as a fill in. You know, maybe they're not going to go out and score 25, 30 fantasy points that week, but can get by with 10 to 15. Um, so in this range, again, I'm looking for the high, more higher, sorry, the higher upside plays. And Jerry Judy is exactly that. So Jerry Judy of the Denver Broncos now has Teddy Bridgewater as his quarterback. They have confirmed that now. Drew Locke is out, and that is a massive upgrade. Obviously, a first round wide receiver showed a lot of potential with his route running before getting injured. Absolutely love going back to the second year wide receiver out of Alabama. Also love Chase Claypool of the Pittsburgh Steelers. A huge threat for a touchdown or pretty much any threat, any play. A massive deep threat. Um, somebody who's also very strong could take reps out of the backfield. We actually saw him run for a few touchdowns last year. Um, absolutely love Chase Claypool's production, especially his potential this time around. Russell Wilson, again, has two of the best wide receivers in the NFL, was one of the best quarterbacks last year for at least the first 12 games. If you can get back to some of that production, if some of that talk about running the ball a ton in Seattle is coach speak, um, Russell Wilson is going to be hugely undervalued in terms of pretty much any football contest you're in. And at 66, we have TJ Hawkinson. Um, I don't think he's due for a great year. I'm right about average on Hawkinson. Again, that offense up in Detroit is supposed to be dreadful. Um, Don't have very many key pieces up there that look very good. Um, So if I have to take Hawkinson, if I don't already have my tight end, which for pretty much every league I've drafted so far, I've gone one of those elite tight ends. But if I have to take one, Hawkinson, maybe in the 7th, 8th round, isn't the worst idea. At 67, we have Gus Edwards. Obviously, J.K. Dobbins going down has a lot to do with this ranking. Gus Edwards is going to be the workers back. We're also going to have Justice Hill filling in a little bit, but my favorite out of that backfield by far is Edwards, somebody we've seen fill in before, somebody who has relatively good production as well. Um, Had a very good game against the Steelers, so we'd love to see that. At 68, we have Kenny Galladay of the Giants. I'm much higher on Galladay than most. He's a very talented wide receiver, somebody who had a very good year, even when Matthew Stafford was injured last year. So despite having Daniel Jones as a quarterback, somebody I don't really believe in, I think Galladay could still put up some pretty reasonable fantasy numbers. At 69, we have Juju Smith-Schuster. I'm right about average on him. He's going to be our third wide receiver there in Pittsburgh. So 
That's why he's not higher on this list. Again, when he was a number one, number two wide receiver, he's putting up massive fantasy numbers. But now that he has two more guys to compete with, two more bodies to try and get targets from, um, I don't love him in terms of a you know first, third, fifth round draft pick. But down here in the seventh, eighth round, he, you could do a lot worse than Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, down there, Chase Edmonds, I don't love that he has to share carries with James Conner. Um, James Conner coming over from the Steelers to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, but Edmonds is a high upside back, somebody who's capable of putting off massive gains, massive touchdowns. Um, also has some PPR upside as well. So if James Conner ends up going down or vice versa, one of those two could be a very good option in fantasy football. At 71, we have Tom Brady. I've already talked about the guy, right? So we won't go into too much here, but I think he's due for big things. Has all of his weapons back, all of his O-line, has even more experience with Bruce Arians, is able to install his plays. Um, I think he's going to have an even better 2021 season, defying age once again, right? Um, Raheem Mostert at 72, I think he's all right. Again, that San Francisco offense is going to ride or die by Trey Lance. If he has a great year, I think Mostert's going to be undervalued as well. Down for our next range, kicking it off with Robbie Anderson at 73. Somebody who had a very good year last year with Teddy Bridgewater. Again, now has to deal with Sam Darnold. So that's why he seemed a little bit farther down the board this year, especially for me. Tether Boyd's going to play slot receiver over there in Cincy. I think the emergence of T. Higgins, also Jamar Chase, is only going to help Tyler Boyd not take away more carries. So somebody who... Had a very mediocre last year. You know, obviously Joe Burrow ended up going down. But when they were paired together, was one of the better options on that team. So somebody who I'm right about the average on this year, you know, 74 in my rankings, 74.5 ADP. I don't mind taking him, especially in PPR formats. Devontae Parker, I am much, much higher on this year than most. He had a very solid season last year. Had a few great games mixed in with Tua Tagovailoa. Obviously, Tua, you need some more time. Obviously, needed more time to get used to the offense. Um, didn't really throw the ball downfield, wasn't comfortable doing so. But now that he has a full training camp, Brian Flores is able to create even more plays for him. I expect Devontae Parker to catch even more touchdowns this time around and have another solid season. And to be quite frank with you, the fact that he's at 130 in ADP makes no sense to me. Um, he had very solid numbers last year, very sneaky numbers. You know, it wasn't very flashy. We weren't talking about Devontae Parker every week or anything like that. Um, but again, still had very number, good numbers statistically. So I'm very surprised that he's almost not even being drafted in fantasy leagues. At 77, we have Jarvis Landry. So Jarvis Landry, somebody who plays in that Cleveland offense who I don't love in terms of throwing the golf. Um, sorry, not throwing the golf ball, throwing the football. Um, they love to run the ball. They have Nick Chubb. They have Kareem Hunt. Um, also, Odo Beckham Jr. is a better option on the outside than him. They also have a few other options. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones, those kind of guys mixed in as well. So uh, didn't see a ton of action. But when Odell went down, when they had a few other guys missing as well, he had massive numbers. So obviously still has the production. Um, still has the potential to put that up I mean so don't hate them if they have some injuries or some guys go down this year could have a very solid season in 77 we also have Matthew Stafford so Matt Stafford I'm much higher on him this year than most has a much better offensive coordinator has the best weapons he's ever had in his entire career so I think he goes out and has one of the best seasons that we've ever seen from him going down to Brandon Cooks Brandon Cooks we don't even know who's playing quarterback for them right now it's Tyrod Taylor um, and for that reason that's why he's ranked this low. You know, last year was one of the best wide receivers when he was healthy. Um, so if they can get a quarterback in there that's somewhat reasonable, um, Brandon Cooks is going to be a massive value play. Um, there's just a huge question mark there, and we don't know whether that's going to be the case. For our next range, the biggest name for me is definitely Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert's going to be in a very, very high volume offense. They're going to be throwing the ball an absolute shit ton. He also has some decent weapons. They could definitely be a lot better. Keenan Allen is a Pro Bowl level receiver, so maybe I shouldn't be complaining too much. But outside of him, not really that much to boast about in terms of wide receivers. Also lost Hunter Henry. So while I'm okay taking Justin Herbert in lineups this year, I definitely have better quarterbacks that I'm trying to get. Uh, most notably the ones that have higher ranked on this list. Um, but if I have to take a second quarterback, if I'm trying to take another high level quarterback as my backup, Justin Herbert isn't the worst option. Getting down to Trey Sermon here. Again, we don't know if he's going to be the starting running back. Obviously, Raheem Mostart's a very talented running back as well. But if one of them goes down, he could be in for the other one's going to be in for in for a huge season. Down to Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith is apparently the number one wide receiver already down for the Eagles. Um, obviously played college ball with Jalen Hurts, so they already had a rapport built. Didn't really have to worry about doing that in training camp. And you've already seen the fireworks coming out of it. So absolutely love Devonta Smith. Somebody I'll be taking 
in the middle rounds of a lot of my fantasy drafts. Um, getting down to Corey Davis. So Corey Davis of New York Jets, if he had a damn quarterback, he'd be a top 20 wide receiver this year for sure. Um, last year put up very solid numbers with Ryan Tannehill, but now that he's up there, has Zach Wilson thrown to him, um, that's not necessarily cause for much confidence, right? Um, Zach Wilson hasn't looked good in camp so far this year. So Corey Davis, until I see something from Zach Wilson, um, going to be limited in potential. Um, down at 84, we have Logan Thomas. Um, Logan Thomas had a very good year last year, a very sneaky statistical year as well. Um, but again, that Washington offense, I don't really believe in it. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, God knows how he's going to play this year. He's so streaky. Um, and somebody who doesn't typically look to his tight end very much. So last year, Logan Thomas um, was getting checked down to a lot. Um, that was just the nature of their offense under Brandon Allen. Uh, but now that he has Ryan Fitzpatrick thrown to him, um, I don't see similar results happening this time around. We're really getting down to it. These are guys I'm trying to take as a little bit of flyer plays, people that if there's some injuries on their team could absolutely stand out, um, or if they just end up being a lot better than we expected, um, are in positions to at least put up some good fantasy production. Um, at 85, we have Marquez Calloway um, of the New Orleans Saints. Um, we have Jameis Winston announced as a starting quarterback. It is a huge plus for Calloway as a downfield threat, also very speedy, has some decent hands as well. So if Jameis Winston is able to make someone like Brashard Perryman look like a good wide receiver, um, Mike Evans had by far his best statistical year with Jameis Winston. Um, why not somebody like Marquez Calloway, who has at, le very, at the very least the physical tools to do so? Um, Robert Tanyan, I absolutely love him in the Green Bay offense. Somebody who had a couple really big games last year, especially towards the end of the year. I ended up taking down a DFS GPP on the NFL with um, Robert Tanyan. I believe it was when he caught the four touchdowns in a game. Um, so I have a little bit of good vibes with him. Obviously, he has a very high upside offense as well. Um, Jamar Chase, I'm much lower on than most. Um, Jamar Chase is a rookie. Again, he has experience with Joe Burrow playing in college, but all the reports out of camp right now are that Chase hasn't looked that sharp. So while he's getting drafted in the sixth or seventh round, I'm not really comfortable taking him until the eighth or ninth round. Down here with um, James, Javante Williams. Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos. We don't even know if he's going to be starting, but he's a very high upside play. Obviously, they drafted him early for a reason. So while Melvin Gordon is in the mix, we're going to get to Melvin Gordon here in a second. If one of them goes down, they would see a significant boost for me in terms of my fantasy production. Getting down to Tyler Higby. So Tyler Higby, somebody who's part of that Los Angeles Rams offense. Somebody who's going to get a huge bump in production because of the introduction of Matthew Stafford. So I like him a lot more this year than we saw in 2020. And Michael Gallup at number 90, somebody who if... Amari Cooper gets hurt, or if C.D. Lamb ends up going down, Michael Gallup is going to be who wins you your fantasy league. Um, when one of those guys was hurt last year, Gallup put up massive numbers, averaged 15.8 fantasy points per game when he was the number two wide receiver, has a ton of big play upside, um, is going to be playing the slot receiver for Dallas, so he's still going to see consistent production even if those two guys are on the field. So somebody who I'm taking in a ton of my leagues, somebody who, like I said, could very well end up winning you your fantasy league this year our last 10 picks here these are guys that i'm looking to take a big step forward a lot of it is injury related or it's based on their quarterback leading their team um that's exactly the case here in kansas city with miko hardman miko hardman right now doesn't have a solid role in their offense he has a few guys fighting for him for touches but anyone who's the number one two wide receiver for patrick mahomes has potential to put up a massive season so miko hardman you could do a lot worse at a flyer than Miko Hardman. Uh, Melvin Gordon gets here at 92. Again, I just mentioned Williams before. If one of those guys goes down and this and they start getting 20, 25 carries per game, then they, then they become interesting. But as a timeshare, I don't really love either option. That's why they come down this far down in my rankings. Mike Williams has a great situation out there with the Chargers. Obviously, was hurt for a majority of last year. We didn't really get to see his upside alongside Justin Herbert. But given Justin Herbert loves throwing the ball, especially far down the field, Mike Williams should be getting plenty of those targets. Noah Fant of the Denver Broncos, somebody who also gets a huge benefit from Teddy Bridgewater as the quarterback. He already had a pretty decent year there in 2020, had some high upside games. So I look for Noah Fant to finish as a top 10 fantasy tight end this year. At number 95, we have Sony Michelle, somebody who I think could be just like Miko Hardman, could be just like our guy up there, Michael Gallup, could go and win you your fantasy league this year. Um, Darrell Henderson Jr. is gonna be getting the starts right away for the LA Rams. But the Rams invested plenty of draft capital into Michelle to bring him onto the team. And he's also somebody who's 
have started in the past. You know, we saw it there in New England. It was very effective. It was averaging right around 5.5 yards per carry, so a very effective back. Um, and somebody who, if he ends up starting in the LA Rams offense, an offense I think that scores a ton of points this year, could end up winning you your fantasy league. And at 96, we have Marvin Jones Jr. of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's the number one wide receiver for Trevor Lawrence. And obviously, Trevor Lawrence being one of the best prospects we've seen in the NFL for quite some time, I don't hate going to his number one wide receiver. In our last four here, Mike Gusecki of the Miami Dolphins, also somebody I think that benefits a lot from Tua's extra experience. I think that whole offense looks a lot better this year. And even with a less than stellar offense there in 2020, Gusecki put up some decent numbers for Miami. Uh, in 98, we have a guy who might not even play here in 2021, but I'm drafting him in fantasy leagues, especially in best ball leagues, as a flyer. Um, again, one of the best receivers in the NFL. Um, obviously has a little bit of a falling out with the New Orleans Saints, but if he's able to get back for the last five, six games of this season, he could go out and win you your fantasy league in the playoffs. In a best ball format, when your last three weeks are by far the most important, um, that's when all the money's really on the line for a best ball league. If Michael Thomas is back and is putting up decent numbers, he would be well worth the pick at this point of the draft. Henry Ruggs III, very fast, looking a lot more like a deep threat this year for Las Vegas. Um, one of the key parts of that offense, I think, that benefits a lot here in 2021. And our last guy, Mr. Number 100, Leonard Fournette of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Unfortunately, going to be in a timeshare with Ronald Jones, but Fournette looked great in the postseason. I mean, was putting up 100 yards per game, was absolutely gashing teams. And if he ends up winning the starting job or if Ronald Jones ends up getting hurt, watch out. I mean, Fournette could put up 20, 25 touchdowns this year, rush for nearly 1,000 yards. I mean, he's not going to rush for 1,500 yards or 2,000 yards or anything like that. Could, but could put up an absolute shit ton of touchdowns. So I like Fournette as a middle tier play in either the 10th or 11th round this year. That's all for the top 100 fantasy picks this year, guys. Let me know in the comments if you guys disagree or agree with any of my picks. Perhaps there's someone that I'm way too high on this year. Love to hear it. Love to get some debate down in the comments. So go ahead and let me know. Um, as always, I really appreciate you guys watching the video, especially if you stuck around for the whole video. Um, it was a longer one this time. Obviously wanted to get through all 100 players there. But if you're looking for in-depth discussion on all the players in these rankings, or even some of the guys I didn't make in the top 100, make sure to check out my channel. I have full rankings on my top 24 quarterbacks, my top 36 running backs, 48 wide receivers, and I believe 28 tight ends. So on there, I have full breakdowns. You get a lot of comparisons, a lot more in-depth detail than you saw in this video. Um, but obviously, enjoy the video. Um, good luck with your lineups or your fantasy drafts this week. Um, I know there's a lot of best balls going on this week, a lot of regular fantasy drafts, season-long stuff, even dynasty leagues going on this week. So good luck with all of that. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't done so already. And see ya.